Hi and welcome back to our latest review video. As per our previous video, sorry for the delay. We are out here again at the Southern Go-Kart Club testing the new Aro X6.2, the car that's been raced by Brad Jenner, Susan Harlow, and won a national title with Keegan Fraser this year in KA3 Senior. So this is the brand new car for Aro. It is the 6.2. Now it is following on from a few of the new carts out there at the moment, new chassis design. It comes in at the waist of the cart. So instead of being the traditional parallel frame it comes in a little bit a bit like the cart republic they've had their little tweaks on it as well so you've got a lot of the arrow nice to have i've chosen the tillet t11 t seat because that is what brad jenner and susan harley have used all year they're about the same height definitely not the same weight as me but that's why i've chosen that one in this cup um, it is exactly as steve gorn from dpe set it up so it's got the medium axle as it comes out the box Two mil negative camber. Once again, same IAMI X30 engine from Remo Racing. We've got our 78 tooth sprocket. We'll be in the restricted medium class when we're out there testing, as per every other one. This video can't be possible without the help from our partners. And we have DPE Kart Superstore who've supplied us with the cart, the seat, the tires, everything. They also supply us with so, DPE Car Superstore also have supplied us for the year with the ELF HTX 909, which we've got in the RO 6 litre tank. We've been using this all year, and thank you very much to ELF and DPE for that one. They are also supplying us with Motul this year. We've got their chain lubes. I really like this one. It's called the Motul C4. It's a factory line one. It sprays white. So if you go have lunch at the canteen, come back, you know you've lubed your chain. So thanks for that one. Thank you. One of my favorite partners we've got, Ian Quimby from MIR and Gantt Gloves, have supplied us with gloves for the year. We're ambassadors. We'll have a trade stand at the SA State Titles, where I'll also be commentating and spooking them. But I'm running these ones here today. We got heaps. They're everywhere. We got gloves going everywhere. We got gloves everywhere. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I don't know. Now I've got to pick them up. The X6.1 and the X6.2 look pretty similar, but there's a lot of differences. Let's have a look. So once again, we've got the camber and caster adjusters, aluminium pedals, KG plastics. We've got the CarTech axles, the magnesium CarTech hubs, the adjustable steering boss. Basically everything is much the same as the X6.1, but you've got this new chassis rail down here. So it's 30-32, it's not 30-30 all around. And you've got that inwards facing waist like we talked about with the DAP cart. So it's a very similar design to that. A little bit different at the back, but in the middle it's very similar. So a lot of carts have gone down this way, like the FK cart are like that as well now. It's the new trend of how we're designing go-karts, so Arrow have made one of them. Now, this is one thing that is cool, the steering column. We have extra Ackerman adjustment. So usually on a steering column, the holes go downwards, these go outwards. So you can increase your Ackerman and get a bit more turn without increasing your caster. So the adjustability, the price, how does it look? What do people think? So let's go find out. I want to see what if this stacks up to the height. So what we're going to do once again is go through our testing parameters. We're going to see how fast it is. How heavy is it? How does it handle? What's the adjustability like? just a little bit loose in the rear. So I'm gonna just go again, see if it was a new tires, because typically it's a little bit steery or twitchy on the front with new ones. So see if it evens out. If not, I'll put the axle in. I definitely want to try that. And then once we do that, I also want to try taking the seat stays off, because not many people run the seat stays. Jacob Dowson, who runs for the Bureau Art team, doesn't run them, he just had a chat to me then and said, no one runs them, so try the axle, try the seat stays, just a little bit of fiddling, but everything else is stock as a rock as it comes out the shop. Good first impressions, pretty quick time, as quick as we've gone, and I need to be a bit fitter. So we'll see how we go. So what we're gonna do, I was gonna change the axle first, that's a big job. So I'm just gonna take seat stays off because I'm lazy, we'll do that change first, see how that goes, because I trust Jacob Dowson, he's probably South Australia's best driver. So we're gonna do the seat stays this one, and then the next one we'll do the axle. A 
session three, we listened to our mate Jacob Dowson from the Biral Art team and took the seat stays off. What do you know? We went a tenth quicker. So the cart felt a lot different. It was releasing a lot more in the rear and it felt very pointy, but it just came off the corner that little bit better. And it seemed to get better as the rate laps went on. The seat stays were a bit stiffer. The rear wheel didn't lift as much and it was good at the start and sort of just stayed. It was more consistent and it kept getting better and better and better. My last lap was the quickest. It was a 46.4, but I think the axle's wrong. Like I was talking about before, being the restricted medium weight, it's 180 kilos. So we just got the standard full length medium in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the MH, which is one level harder in the rear for our last session. So the final, it is a beautiful day, of course, but we're gonna try the axle now, see how it goes for one last go, and then we'll wrap up with our results. I got the shivers. So we've just completed the last session with the X6.2. We changed the axle that one. We went to the Kartec MH 1000 meter. It was a lot slipper in the rear, so I would recommend just using the exact standard meter 30 long Kartec axle. Also, the sun's been out here all day. First time the sun's been out in about six months at Bolivar, so there's a bit of UV on the track, and we went about two tenths slower when we changed the axles. When I get back home in the shed, I'll be switching that straight back to the medium axle. We've got speed. The fastest we went today was a 46.2 on the full size track, which is as quick as we've gone with the Kart Republic. We've gone a bit quicker than the 6.1, so it's really, really good handling cart. Um, we had the seat stays on to start with, and that was really comfortable to drive. It was a bit less comfortable to drive when we took them off, but it was quicker. So basically just leave it standard and take the seat stays off, and the thing's a rocket. In terms of tyre wear, we're at Bolivar Southern Go-Kart Club. It's been resurfaced. It is a billiard table, so they look like they've done five laps. We start off at about 15 PSI cold. So if you go out at about 11, your tyres are going to slide around and get hot and you're not going to be very fast. So what we've learned is if you go out at about 15 PSI, they only go up to about 16 or 17, but you get gripped the whole time you're out there. So that is one little trick at Bolivar at the moment, especially on this brand new surface of track. Next is the dry car weight. We weighed it, it weighs in at about 78 kilos. So it's about a couple of kilos lighter than the OTKs in the Kart Republic. I don't know why that is, but it is. Maybe it's a smaller fuel tank. They only run a six litre. On the other ones, they have a nine litre. Maybe a bit thinner stickers or something. Not sure, but if you want the lightest go-kart, this is probably the lightest one you can get. You can also get a lightweight battery in that if you want to make it lighter as well. The components on this are really, really cool. They're user-friendly, so you've got your Brake disc at self-releases, where if on the OTK and other carts, you have to wedge your screwdriver in there so you can get your axle out. This has a bolt which, when you undo it, actually releases the brake disc. Really easy to change out. You've got all your magnesium hubs, your adjustable steering columns. You've got your lock on your steering collar, which when you're doing a wheel alignment, it's really, really handy. You've got your alloy pedals. You've got your dent brakes. Now, they are probably the best in the industry, these dent brakes. They're not like other brands where you have to change your pads every meeting. These are big solid pads, four spot breaker. Another good thing is they're Australian made. They're made out in Victor Harbour in South Australia. That's another really good point about this go-kart. It's Australian made. I actually met the bloke at Ipswich when I was commentating at the national championships. The bloke that actually welds these together. If you buy any other car, you don't know who builds them. So these are built in Australia. They're welded together by an Australian. It's an Australian company. It's a really cool thing. And instead of just importing and selling, they're actually creating these ourselves. These retail for $5,950, $700 to $1,000 cheaper than the European carts. But then again, they also don't have the magnesium carriers like the OTKs and the Kart Republics. They don't have the AMV wheels and hubs. They've got their own ones. But Keegan Fraser in the national championships this year ran this exact setup. He ran the Douglas SE wheels. He ran the Kartec hubs and he won a national championship in KA3 Senior. Then again, you've got your Susan Harlows who swapped between the AMV wheels and hubs like on the Kart Republic. And then you've got your Brad Jenners who seem to typically use a lot of the MXC wheels and the OTK hubs. So the factory team guys have been jumping around with the wheels and all three of the ones I spoke about then have run different. It seems to be they're sort of leaving the carts the same and changing the wheels to adjust the setup. You're not getting a like for like, but it's still, it works. So they've come second in three in the championship and they've won one. Um, you don't get a seat, so you have to supply a seat, 
when you get the Arrow, you get a full seat bolt kit. So they give you heaps and heaps of bolts and washers. They're self-adjusting, they like swivel in each other so you can get a nice even pressure between your seat and your seat stay. No need to bend your seat stays. Also, with their camera and caster adjusters, they give you this tool. So you can put it on there and adjust your camber and caster, which is really handy as well. They also give you a wheel spacer kit. I know a lot of the factory teams don't use them, but they give you the full set of plastic spacers so you can adjust your rear track. Lots of little cool things that the Arrow do to make life user friendly. Like I said before, they're also the um, steering lock on your steering wheel. So lots of little cool things there which make the Arrow really good value for money. You can get an Arrow cart from anywhere. They also have DPE Cart Superstore. It's such a great service that you can just buy something. You spend over $200 and you get free delivery to your door. So you just go on your computer, on your phone, whatever, order something, buy it, two days it's at your house for free. Most of the time you're gonna spend more than $200 at a cart shop and it rocks up to your house. You don't have to leave. So that is a really great setup for DPE and their Cart Superstore. So basically you can buy one from your house. So does the X6.2 live up to the height? Well, I think it does. It's as quick as the Cart Republic. It's got lots of different things. It's a thousand bucks cheaper. But then again, if you want to try the AMV wheels, you're going to have to buy them. If you want to try the OTK wheels, you're going to have to buy them as well. As it comes with the medium axle, seat stays, no seat stays, it's as quick as anything we've driven. So I think it's a really, really good cart. The other good thing about it is if you want to buy a replacement chassis, they're about $1,000 cheaper than an OTK or a Cart Republic. So if you do seem to bend one today, these days we have the big 25 mil stubs, 50 mil axles. If you do tweak your go-kart and get it straightened and it doesn't feel the same, you can just buy one for about, I think it's around $2,000. So they're a lot cheaper to buy spare parts for as well. If you want a cheap Australian made cart that you can buy online, drop it at your house, this is a really, really great choice. So let us know what you think about the Arrow X 6.2. Do you like the looks? What are your thoughts on it? If you want to, please like, subscribe, comment below. We really appreciate your support and we'll hopefully be getting more videos coming out shortly. I'm going to go speak to the guys at MFK over there, Dave and Jacob Dowson, because I want to try their barrel cart. And once again, thanks to them today for helping me out with the little setup tricks. Really appreciate it and we'll see you next time.